So we've arrived at the fifth and final video of the Beginner Zero to Guru Hero Cooking Edition series. Congratulations on making it this far. Now that you're Guru, it's time to really ramp things up. There's a few ways this video can take you, and I'm going to offer some insight on both of them. You can choose to either one, cook your butt off with G50 Insight, or number two, cook for profit and reap the rewards of your hard labor. Cooking the G50 is the less profitable path of the two, but it involves going crazy on multiple meals at once. You'll always have something to sell, and you're always going to have a solid source of income every time you look at the market. The profit path is less speedy, but it will get you to G50 eventually. There's just a little less diversity involved, so sometimes there are gaps when income does slow down. Both paths weave together frequently, but you do end up needing to cook less if you focus purely on profit. There are middle grounds within this, so don't think straight black and white. Let's get into it. We'll start with the most important part first, as no matter which way you decide to cook, money is more than likely the main thought process. Without a solid influx of silver, your efforts will be hampered. We talked batch sizes in a previous video, and now that we're guru, we should have a decent grasp at larger volumes of cooks. It may seem like it's easy to make 150,000 of one dish, but the problem is ending up with 400,000 of the same product. It's going to move slowly on the market, you're going to get frustrated with undercutters, and at worst you're going to start putting things at minimum, directly cutting into your profit margins. I'll let you know right now that I lose most of my profits sitting there relisting constantly, trying to squeeze an extra 200 mil out so I can buy some more meat or blood. This is the effect of being all in on one category. Even Starbucks offers you a few different coffees. When I have several different dishes listed, I have several times the chance to sell something quickly. I can also ignore rabbit undercutters, retaining the profit margin I previously set up when I started cooking. It's also rather pleasant to wake up in the morning and hit collect all on a massive list of dishes and spend the next hour reinvesting it back into warehouse stock. My first layer of profit comes from the sub dishes. This part takes an extra bit of time, but if you plug the numbers into BDO DAE and you're logged in, those prices will retain through multiple different recipe pages. This allows you to check individual dishes of the meal that you're cooking. For example, with Valencia's, I'll check a few dishes like Hamburg's and Tef sandwiches to see where they sit profit-wise. If the profit margins are within my tolerance levels, I'll overcook a stack or two to list directly onto the market. Over multiple meals, these overstock stacks start to add up pretty quickly and allow a nice little source of side income. This part in particular is heavily dependent on if you're going to cook to G50 or if you're cooking for profit. Chances are if you're pushing G50, those meals are far more valuable to cook into other dishes for XP rather than sell them for profit. Alas, you still do have an option. The rare procs on several meals usually sit at a decent price and I'll list these and I'll save the regular dishes for my meals later. Spicy Teft sandwiches and high quality ham sandwiches are a few examples of this under normal market circumstances. After this layer, we can start looking at selling the main meals as well as their special counterparts. Check your profits to determine if you want to sell them straight on the market, as well as if seeing the 3 to 1 pricing on special meals make it worth selling. Also box them and always turn in your daily imp crates for a guaranteed boost of income every single day. Next, you can also cron them as well overnight if you want an additional layer. Cooking energizing crons in particularly currently, I can sell several different stacks of sub dishes and then three stacks of different meals as well as their specials coupled with the guru crates and then the final energizing cron. Diversification of income streams is incredibly important to power leveling rank or achieving your silver goals or whatever else it may be. You do have to put in the legwork to ensure accurate calculations between batches or you could get burned. Hamburgs for example currently waffle in and out of profitability a few times a week. Failing to plan is planning to fail, etc. I'm sure you've heard this at some stage in your life, and it's for a good reason. Forward planning is crucial for maintaining meal flow. If you batch up something, cook it all, and then finish it, you're going to be sitting there wondering what to do next if you didn't take the time to think ahead. This isn't so bad until you hit a snag in materials due to a shortage and all things just go to hell. Just think, if you were looking at your next meal batch and buying mats for it while you were cooking your current batch, you'll be able to flow right into it after you're done this one. There's tons of variables in this simple idea, like capital. You'll just need to learn your personal workflow. You will miscalculate, you will be short on mats, or you will think you had something that you don't. It's all part of the learning process. So I have some best practices I use, not just in cooking, but in other life skills as well. Number one is overbuying. It's hard to see money you've earned through blood, sweat, and tears disappear, but it's a fact of crafting life skills in this game. The tinfoil rule of thumb is this, 
you'll never see what you need right now on the market. Too bad yesterday when you saw 55,000 Frika sitting there and you didn't buy it. Because now it's zero quantity and you finally have enough snake meat for that cook. Eventually I got to the point where if I needed something like flour, I'd just buy as much of it as I could afford, which was usually all of it. Other things I'd try to buy out twice as much as I needed if it was affordable or if it was in stock. This was the main reason I was always broke, but if there was ever a shortage or a spike, I was prepared for it. Billions in the storage value, 200000 in the bank, this is the choice you made when you decided to start life skilling. Next, I was pre-buying my meals. As discussed earlier, pre-buying is important to avoiding material bottlenecks. It helps you try and pick meals which don't overlap in key ingredients like Serendia and Medias, for example. You don't want to be in milk hell. If I was to choose Medaya and Valencia though, I'm dealing with milk and red meat on one side and scorpion and snake meat on the other side. Diversifying materials is just like diversifying your income. Number three, be proactive. As you start cooking more and more, you're going to start to remember or note down certain materials which like to spike and dip and can sit on the market all day or be at zero for hours or things for pre-ordering. That's why milk was such an important topic of conversation. If you're doing Balanos and Valencia, you actually don't need milk right now. You'll certainly need it later though. Set up a quick favorites of materials that frustrate you when you run out and then camp them religiously. What else are we going to do while we're sitting here waiting for this utensil to break? Use your time wisely. Now let's deal with material shortages. I somehow managed to avoid 99% of the gathering I needed to do by camping the market all day every day. This isn't a reality for many, with time being limited and the market being saturated with prospective chefs all doing the same thing now. It's the wild wild west and you're going to need to play smart for certain things. We'll start with milk. My number one source of getting these was through side dishes. Buying the cheese and doing 100,000 balanos would usually yield enough milk through this method to make my next batch of medias and serendias depending on my oatmeal and honeycomb pre-orders. Pre-orders are just too damn slow for milk itself. You may need to chuck some alts at a farm as well to milk, because it doesn't take too long to burn off 400 energy. Meat will probably be your biggest bottleneck after these, whether it's a specialty meat like scorpion or just an expensive part of the ingredient list like red meat is right now. Judging by my last month of scorpion pre-orders, you're going to have to gather most of the meats for Valencia's nowadays. Lion meat usually pops up on the market from its high selling price, but scorpion rarely does and snake can be somewhere in the middle of those two. Now I know I said I never gathered anything in the past, but things change, and right now the market's kinda weird. So gathering meat right now is a wonderful way of avoiding a cooking batch costing an insane amount of capital out of pocket. Meat is usually the bulk of ingredient pricing. Just remember though, it takes time to gather it up, so if you have the capital, you could save yourself a bit of time by buying it straight up. If you're running on the red line of bankruptcy, get over there though and start butchering that meat, and then you can get back to cooking ASAP. This can go for other things as well. Bracken comes to mind as a scarce material, but is obtainable in Dragon. If you're really stuck on something in particular, look it up on one of the database websites to see where it comes from. Is it reasonable to gather? Is there a node? The harder it is to get, the less you're going to see on the market. But potentially, this could mean more profit in a niche area. So now we get to full-blown meal rotations. This is near endgame cooking, and this is where I started to go absolutely crazy for XP grinding. To give you some actual numbers, I was cooking enough each day to level from beginner 1 to guru 10 every single day. G45 is halfway to the G50 experience wise, and when you get close to this point, the XP needed is absolutely insane unless you push it very hard. Essentially what needs to be done is cooking 3-4 to four meals at once. This is what truly broke me away from the limitation of materials. What do I mean by this though? Let's take a look at these 4 tabs on BDO DAE. Using every tip on staying organized, I'm doing market sweeps for several key items every 5 minutes or so to make sure that nothing is posted or missed. If I see somebody post a 10k stack of an important material like Frika, I'll buy it out and I'll place a max pre-order. When it's filled, I'll immediately check to see if it was reposted until it's not a perfect 10k stack that's up. Usually when somebody sees a perfect full stack posted, it creates the potential that somebody is dumping a mass amount of quantity. My creme de la creme was the time that I managed to score almost 40,000 rainbow button mushrooms doing this. It was a one-off and I doubt I will ever see it again. During my constant sweeping, I'm also looking for sub-dishes of multiple different things. 
I might do some stir fry for my balanos and then some lean meat for my medias. Then over to snake stew when I get some snake meat and then maybe some rainbow button sandwiches for camas. Through constantly jumping around, I was able to consistently have meals for G-Buff to cook in one form or another. Batch sizes were fluid this way as well, and I just kept an eye on what I was low on and cooked from there. Gone are the days of being restricted to one meal. Not only was this great for cooking non-stop, but using income diversification tactics, I always had cash flow in and out. We're talking billions a day in and out of my CM, but don't worry, I was still always broke. While you're learning to completely master the fluid multi-meal mega cooking, just set some batch sizes to get some practice. Eventually you'll end up just remembering what goes where and cook according to whatever you manage to score off the market by continuously sweeping it. This is the last step of rank pushing, and once you get it down packed you'll start seeing the XP fly. Remember your organization tactics as well. Even with fluid batch sizes, I still had soft caps where I could close a recipe off to indicate that it was done for now and I should concentrate my silver in other areas. There's no point in having 250,000 lean meat salads if I've only got 30,000 dark puddings. As a note, I was constantly in the red doing this. Every ounce of silver that entered the market left again turned into a material. If you play this way, you're running on the edge constantly. Try keeping a few hundred mil just in case somebody decides to liquidate a juicy stack of mats. Every stack you don't get is going to be another person that's competing with you in the market later. Choking out the market is a fantastic way to ensure profits for yourself, but will be incredibly expensive for liquid silver and can be quite risky if you run out of capital. But be warned, doing this will make the price of the material skyrocket very quickly now. So what does G50 cooking look like for me now? It's incredibly tame. In fact, I only do it for 5-10 to 10 hours a week to keep the imp boxes and the market listings flowing. Usually when I make meals, I'll just zip 50,000 out, maybe make a few extra cheese gratins to post, and then I'll list the meals in the imp crates until they get below 10,000 in my storage. I'll keep an eye on what's up and down through market data, and I'll cook reactionarily to it. For example, Freak's Snake Stew went up on the money list for me, so I scored 20,000 snake meat from somebody nice the other day and I whipped up a bunch. Some will sell, some won't. The market will eventually crash down from others doing the same thing. Either way, I'll have some stew for whatever my next cook is, and I capitalized on the profit while it was there. I try not to cut profit margins down too low anymore, because I have other life skills being focused on with multiple income sources. Also, it really only takes one or two people undercutting each other to drop the margin to next to nothing. So chances are when those two numbskulls are done wasting silver, the market jerks back up and you're still sitting on prime inventory to flip. G50 also puts me at 1250 mastery in silver embroidered cooking clothes and tri accessories. This allows me to have a much wider selection of money dishes as the market moves around. And I still don't cook with Manos clothes by the way. The profit difference is nice on paper, but from a time standpoint it's incredibly inefficient. Some will disagree with me, but when I can cook three times the amount in an hour in my silver embroider, the silver gain from the Manos clothes is completely negated in a profit per hour standpoint. Why would I bother gaining a few extra million when I can just go gather instead for far more profit and rank up a life skill I'm not capped in? So now that you guys made it to the end, I'll give you a few bonus tips for hanging out with me. I can't believe I didn't add these into a different video, but of course, I might as well jam them somewhere. Let's start with dried fish. This was changed in a recent patch. Let's use smoked fish steak for example. Most recipe websites, BDO, DAE included, will show you needing two fish. You actually only need half the count now, so this recipe is actually a lot cheaper. If you encounter a recipe that needs dry fish, half it and continue on. When placing the numbers into BDO DIE, by the way, make sure you half the market price to get more accurate numbers if this is the case. Second one is dough. I cannot believe I didn't mention this one earlier. On every recipe you see online for BDO, it will tell you to put in X wheat dough. For other dough types, you only need half this amount, with teff dough being excluded. Cheese gratin, for example, requires five wheat dough, but you could use three barley dough or potato dough. If a dish needs six dough, it's six wheat dough, but you can use three potato dough or any other non-wheat dough in this recipe. This saves so much time and money that it was super disappointing I found out at G43. I lost billions, but you know, I know now, and there's always more to learn in cooking. So that brings us to the end of this cooking series. It may not be my last video in cooking, but as far as teaching you to become a guru, my methods have been exposed. Whenever they bump the cap beyond G50 again, I'm going to be using the same methods. I also intend on seeing how close I can get my all to G50 as well, which should be a fun experiment. 
If you've trucked through all five videos now, thank you very much for spending your time with me here. I hope you picked up plenty of hot tips in order to break into my favorite life skill and learn to love it like I did. A lot of these tactics can be moved to other life skills as well, and the market is a key piece of this game and it will be for a long time to come. Understanding the CM is something I'll take away from my time cooking, and it will be used for many years to come. The cooking market can be extremely frustrating, but I've seen it change from droughts to abundance and back several times. You just need to adjust your tactics accordingly to the current climate and just keep jamming stuff into the utensil. If there's another life skill you'd like to see a detailed guide for, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can muster up. So thanks again for all of the support, it's been wonderful to see how this channel has grown since the first cooking video was posted. Until next time, keep on life skilling and I'll see you at G50.